I think this is going to be a really cool video. We're talking to Inga about a recipe builder she's making. Uh, she has not found a good recipe builder that's flexible. And what we do in this video is add a form sort of inside of the sheet to programmatically enter recipes into a database. We do this not because we don't like Google Forms, but because we want to use Google Sheets only. And sometimes we're the ones adding things to our sheet. And we want them in some kind of data validated state. We want structured data, but we don't want to create a Google form on the outside. We're not looking for external information coming into our sheet. We are the ones adding it. And creating this kind of form that programmatically can enter our data in uh, helps us to structure that data in a certain way in the form and then be able to move it over and do some calculations at the same time once we hit that click submit button. I hope you get something out of this. Also, magically, from this intro to the video, I'm going to grow a beard. How about you tell us, Inga, who are you? Yes. What do you do? And how does this spreadsheet, before we get into this spreadsheet, how does this spreadsheet work into your life now? Yeah, cool. So I, I work in full time in different industry. So, but on the side, I'm interested in nutrition science. So I did my courses and et cetera. So I've been using meal planning tracking app for so many years. But what it is, is more of a traditionally, we cook one pot meals. It's not like, you know, like piece of salmon on top of a salad. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to track. Track them. I know they have a recipe builder functions that came into the app, but it, it's still, again, membership. And then it, it also is a very difficult to learn if you're not familiar with the interfaces. So I thought, well, let's build my own personal you know, meal plan because I like to shop at the markets and things. So I don't buy packaged stuff. So app scanning of the barcode is a no question for me. So, you know, when I actually start doing that, it's so difficult to find the exact things to ingredients to add into recipe and then actually you know, portion it properly. And especially if you plan ahead, you don't know exactly how much you're going to put into that cooking recipe right sometimes so that's why I kind of thought well let's build a sheet for myself to make it easy so you know you know I can make a one week week of meal plan for each day that you know works with my macro plan so that's sort of where it started it's been stagnating for years and years now I think right we we made, we build a spreadsheet not because it's easy but because we thought it was easy yeah basically and so you made the sheet because you use the apps already one thing is right cost. There are some amount of cost, even if it's five or nine dollars a month, that adds up. It's like ten dollars a month is sixty dollars a year. After three or four years, you're still you're already into uh, over a hundred dollars yeah. invested in an app that may not be doing what you want it to do. As you said, one pot meals aren't as you said, one pot meals aren't really covered in these kinds of no, nutrition. You don't select with the ingredients you can add the recipe and build it in some of the app not all of them but still it lacks the flexibility i guess they come in a long way in the last few years those apps but then again who has you know 80 to 150 dollars each year to pay for it and then you know it's unless you're really seriously into fitness and bodybuilding i don't think people you know really pay that much to use the app they use the free version it has a limited you know features etc so and now you're building this for yourself obviously first yeah. that's sort of what a lot of spreadsheet builders do but are you interested also in selling this sheet yeah so not so much of selling i guess because on the side as a hobby i usually coach my friends into mm -hmm. exercise and nutrition planning side of it so it would be easy to give them the tool to actually work with it. It's not exactly a business at the moment, but hopefully one day, once I'm, you know, not working in different field, then potentially make a progression into different. So that's super interesting that you're going to have users, people who are not yourself using this, not necessarily selling, but maybe considering it in the future. But yeah, spreadsheets are very different the moment we have to give it to someone else to use right? There's some weirdness that happens where we're like, we're so, it's so intuitive to us because we built it step by step. We know it intimately. And then once an, a third party, a, a separate person starts using it, sort of, you go, oh yeah, why did I make that decision? Oh yeah, you just have to click these three buttons. Oh yeah, you just have to enter here, here, here. And if you're going to be giving it to multiple friends, multiple family, if you're going to be giving it over time, 
There's also a weirdness in sheets and creating sheets for others to use, how you update them. I've at least found that it's not bad in any way. It's just weird and awkward where like I have a sheet, I want it to be better. I'll probably make a copy and then make a new version. But sometimes I do just say, hey, I, I'm going to make the updates to this one version and try to get it back out to the same people who bought it or got it, right? But these are all really interesting problems. But the main problem of your sheet, uh, as I think it is, is that you're, you mentioned it's a mess, but I really, I liked it. Should we show it and you walk me through the sheet? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me make sure I can share my screen. And you tell me what we're looking at. And and this is, this is the sheet you shared to me, right? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> It basically starts with the food table. So that's my sort of a database I'm trying to build. I forgot where I got this copy, though. It's someone, so just in case, you know, I didn't build it from scratch on this this view. I stole the idea, I guess, so to make it 100 grams into this. So it was actually thought, well, it's actually a pretty smart way to go about it, to add into database, to standardize it. So this is the, the basically, you know, on top of it, it's just a converter to give you an idea. And then you can actually manually enter in the bottom, whichever food items, supplements, whatever that person uses on a, you know, on daily basis. And then I even extended it with the fibers and what type of fats it go. And so that's the database I'm kind of sort of expecting to get bigger, depending on who's tracking what, right? So you can always change the, you know, column title, and then that's going to be what you're tracking for that specific food. And then from this one, so the day one, two, three, four, five, it's like, you know, the day ones, it's usually the workout days that, you know, five days a week, if you're working out, that's the plan. And then I have the target set on the top, how much of a protein, carbs and fat I'm targeting for the day. And then it just automatically accumulates depending on what food I choose in that meal tables. Cool. And yeah, so at the moment, it's I guess it's working, you know, if you use the drop down, you still can pull the meals and et cetera. But one thing I couldn't make it work was that the recipes that how am I going to build, you know, they from the ingredients go into the recipes and then the recipes built into. So how I actually just manually solved it is that on the very bottom of the the food table database, I just put those meals as a single use item. If you go all the way down, you might see that bulk cooking ingredient side of things. Oops, vegetables, other. Yeah, one. so some of the, and then the below that, there will be some of, from the recipe. So if you see okay. that, so I kind of just put them in, okay, if it's a hundred, I calculated it separately. And mm -hmm. then I actually, I put it up at a hundred grams of it will be roughly this much of the, you know, protein scars and and then I was choosing from it, but it makes it really rigid, I guess. If you mm. switch something from the recipe, it's it becomes a, you know, I have to recalculate and edit the list. So that's the sort of a problem I have with my sheet, I think, yeah. So say that a problem again. So the problem is that it sounds like you have this as a solution. You You said, okay, there's full meals. This vegan burger is not a single entity. It, well, it is a single entity, but it's a recipe. Yeah. You have a standard recipe. It sounds but like a I... great solution to say, hey, instead of an individual item, not not instead of, sorry, in addition to individual items, we also have recipes that you can pull out. Like this is going to have vegan burger. Oh, and then I think one vegan burger. It has to be in the grams. Oh, so that's, that's making it kind of a little difficult because the grams in the recipe doesn't represent how much of it way from the meat or how much is it from the bread or if I just change something slightly it just becomes you know a bit rigid to it unless I do the recalculation and edit the database so that's the sort of the linkage you know from the raw ingredients on this list goes into my recipe page and then you know the straight away I can pull from these recipes I guess because I wanted to it to be a bit more flexible that you know because I can't be eating the same thing over and over you know? interesting what I might consider here, okay, so your idea here was that this is a single recipe and then you want to take this recipe and use it in here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So this is what you meant when you said, you know, your pro earlier, I think you, you mentioned your problem is like pulling data from one place to another, calculating mm -hmm. it up. 
then having that entity and move it into the same spot. But you have you have an interesting idea here where it can get even messier, right? If you have individual items, you use those individual items here, and you also have entities that you build from these individual items. These are all together. Like if you have a vegan burger plus an egg, right? It's here, a vegan burger plus 50 grams of an egg. Like you add a egg to your vegan burger. Great. And I think you're saying that this vegan burger is now not flexible because it's here. But I would say like my uh, assumption is if I wanted to have a vegan burger with egg, I would then calculate the vegan burger plus the egg here. Yeah, can do that. But it's just more of a switching of the ingredient in the recipe, right? So maybe one day was a sweet potato, but the next day maybe it was just carrots, something like that. So that's where right. I wanted to make the edits on the recipe pages. And then instead of having a, this like, you know, fixed recipe line, as the recipe changes in my recipe line, that, you know, the the pulling of the total macro information onto my daily plans to change. I don't know how can it can be done. So it's, yeah. One one thing that we could probably do now to some degree, what, what if we had, instead of using these as a single entity, like, okay, we want to, here, you have it, chicken Caesar here, but this one, vegan burger. Let's build a vegan burger. What would that be? It would be not chicken. You probably did this earlier. Tofu bread here sourdough bread and mushroom. Let's say that's a vegan burger. Yeah. 150, whoops, 150 grams that I don't know how much, what does bread usually weigh? 80 grams. And then how much does mushrooms usually weigh? 100 grams. 100. Okay. So this is now a vegan burger, right? And here you have the, you, you have the totals already summed up. Yeah. So that one needs to be pulled into the somewhere, I guess, into the daily plan. That linkage, it doesn't exist in my spreadsheet. What my my idea here is to create a new tab and we're going to call this, sorry, put the name here. This doesn't matter. And instead of in the bottom, I'm going to move the totals to the top so we can say you can do as many ingredients as you want. Bear with me as I try to explain this while doing it. So then this doesn't matter how many things we have. So we build it and we can add more and more and more if we want. Let's just delete that. And I would create an app script that takes all of this information, not all of this information, but just this information. We have this total here. We know the name is vegan burger. Put the name here. Let's say name vegan burger. Here's a total. We need to get this into the food table and we can take a script and just add it to the very bottom. We can say... Recipe. I don't know how to spell recipe. Recipe. Oh my God. Recipe. Yep. Yeah. So we can say recipe name equals spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. Get sheet by name is going to be this. We'll call it builder for now. Oh, just one word. Get range is going to be A2 and get the value. So we'll need to know just these totals D1 to G1. So we'll take this paste it items. And instead of A2, it's was that G1? D1 to G1. And instead of get value, it's get values. So we're going to get an array. And now we need to get those values into food table. We'll find the final, the last. We don't need the calories, do we? Do we? we do. It will calculate it. So once you pull those fats, proteins into this spreadsheet, ah. calories will be automatically calculated. We don't even need G1. We just need F to F1. Great. Okay. So we need to put it in there. So we'll say food table and we can make this a little bit easier to read. We can say builder equals this name instead of repeating it. We just say builder. And then here we also say builder. Makes it a little easier to read sometimes. Again, let's do the same thing here, food table. And now last row we need, get last row. Super easy. Will food table dot get range is going to be last row plus one. We want to add something to the very last row is wherever it has content. We want to add it to actually, where do we want to add it? Table column C. So it's actually column three here. We want one thing that value recipe name, right? That's the name of it. And then D, we can do this actually a little bit easier. Column four is going to be items zero, which is the first item in the list. Let's see if this works. Five. This is a little bit wonky, but it'll get done real quick. And column six is item two. Zero is the first item. One is the second item and two is the third item. That's a little 
hard to. Okay, so this would automatically mean that we can run this create recipe and whatever is in builder will be built for us in the food table. Yeah, that would be really make it easy. Okay, we just got to authorize this first, see if we get any errors. There's vegan burger and we only got one thing, the protein. Okay. So we have some issues. Maybe this is a problem. Let's see. Logger.log. I think we need to do this, which may be convoluted, but we'll also be able to see the items here. There we go. Done. Cool. We don't have the formula here. Yeah, uh, it's drag and copy paste, basically. Well, we could so better because we can one... actually do this in the in the script. We don't have to have this as a sub. Oh, sub. okay. That would be great. So let's add that here. And instead of seven, it's going to be calories. Variable calories is equal to this thing times oh, four. Uh, four. Mm -hmm. That in plus, what was the uh, second one? Times. Second one was a carb, wasn't it? Times oh, four as well. And then the third one plus got an extra. Okay. So now we'll should have calories as well. There we go. It's really good. Let's see if that's correct. It's must be rounding here. Do you yeah. want that rounded? It doesn't really matter. It's... Okay. What we can do as well is is do a couple of things. We can do on open coslash snippets. I always have to copy paste this, but we can put this into a menu. We want this one here and we'll call this meal planner menu, create recipe, add recipe to food table. Okay. So I save this. Now I'm going to close it and refresh because it needs to open. And now you'll see a up here next to help a menu. Oh, that's cool. What you might want to do now as we, we, we don't necessarily have to do this now, but instead of allowing this, now we have to clear this out. We might want to clear it in the script. And then we also might want a little toast message. All this is food related. It's so funny. Menu, toast, toast is new item added to food table. We might also want to, at the end, activate the, the, activate the tab. So if we're here and we add this, we might want to go to the food table to see it. Maybe I might add this just to, to have some fun here, but we also want to clear it. So you'll say builder dot get range, and we're going to clear to F F clear content. This is, if we cleared it, it would clear think everything like formatting and everything i think just clear content is going to work so now fingers crossed <laughs> this works oh we need more authorization it just happens when we add stuff to it let's try that again see if we run into any issues what's going on see if we had a problem here hmm that's strange what could be a problem now let's try again unless it's doing the wrong one create recipe yeah create recipe it's fine whoops everything broke it might be my internet food active <laughs> It's not a function. Oh, I think I meant activate. That's what I meant. So we go back to, there we go. It's mm -hmm. all the same vegan burger. Yeah. Well, let's build another one. So instead of, oh, I didn't do A2. I should have cleared A2 as well. We can just do this. Let's build another vegan burger with egg. So it's not chicken. Tofu? Potato sourdough. Let's do that. Egg? Whole? How, how much does an egg weigh? 80 grams. 80. Let me give that some more room. Okay, so, oh, we cleared out this. Oh, I'm so sorry. The formulas are... Yeah, we shouldn't have cleared. We should only clear B and C. That's a good good catch. But now we fixed it, right? Paste, right? That's correct, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's try that again. Let's make sure we save. We can also save this. I hate seeing untitled all the time. There's vegan burger with an egg. Well, that's actually much better because it was lots of, you know going back and forth between the tabs to copy the information. Right. And all we're doing is taking whatever actions you would take, right? You would say, I'm on Builder. I need to take this name. I need to go to the food table, put the name in. I need to go back to Builder, take the item. And no, we don't need the item. Sorry. We need the totals. Yeah. Take each total, put it here and here and here. Oh, and then do this calculation as well. Like all these things are by hand we're doing. We just did it with the script. Yeah, cool. That's really cool. This way as well. Like, so the problem was, you know, that you have a food table, you have recipes you want. And, and I think your original problem you thought was like, how do I take these two separate entities and feed them into the same possible day one? But you also had the solution already done where you were like, oh, let's just make it one page has all of this information added up. And we just, and actually the real problem was how do we get these recipes into the food table? Yeah. But I think one problem sort of still 
may exist, which you you brought up, which is that like these are still unflexible. This vegan burger, if I want to change one item in it, I would have to now go back to the recipe. Now, that, well, actually, an interesting thing that we are deleting we might think about is if I go to the builder and I build a recipe and then I add it to the food table, this recipe is gone. I don't know what the items mm -hmm. that I added to it. So what I might consider suggesting is a, a way to rebuild that again, which you all, again, you have the solution here, which is all of these recipes listed. I might, because you have all of these calculations already, I might just save the quantity and the the item and the quantity. So, and I would also do it in, this is just me and, and my process is I would call it recipe data or something similar and say item, sorry, not item. What is it? Whoa, actually, sorry, name, item, and grams. Mm -hmm. A quantity, sorry, quantity. Oh, doesn't really matter. And instead, in addition to moving all of this, I would also do it to each of those items. We just copy it into the that database right so yeah. we can go back and look at it so we have a builder and we need each item we need the name which we have already let's just call this start a new line here instead of food table we call it recipe data we need the last row as well same data get range we want exactly this actually we want it differently one row last row plus one the very first thing is set value and we want the name. So we already have that variable up here, so we can just use it again. And in the second column, we want, what do we want? Oh, we need to do this for each thing. We want the name, the item, aha. So we have it already. Do you want, oh no, we're getting here, these. So we need B3 to C14. Almost screwed that. B items, B3 colon C14. So this is gonna give us a multi-range. Uh, we need to do a for loop here. I equals zero. I is less than recipe items dot link. I plus plus. And for each item, for each one, we're going to do this. For each one where uh, we want to make sure it has. So if zero, zero is not equal to nothing. So if issue might be that there's nothing there, like we, we're going to get a blank. We only have a few items, chicken breast, egg white. This is extra stuff we we don't want. Maybe we have some rice, right? If we create this, we have extra. We only have three to C5. So this is should keep out anything that's blank. Okay, for each one, we're going to do this. Set the name. We need to set the I here. I zero. We're getting the first item and then the second item as well. Or sorry, the second part of the item. Okay, this should work. Let's see what I messed up. So ideally for each of these, we're going to, this for loop just iterates through Things. We can also see this if we want. We can log, logger.log, recipe items, just in case. Look at that. All right, we have these items. We are adding the recipe to the food table. Let's see what, oh, this is, it only got one thing, the white rice. Last one. The last one, yeah. So there's something wrong. It was re, oh, I think it's rewriting it. Let's get the last row. We need it here. I think this is going to be, we can take all these and make them const. This is just a little weird thing about, might be a little weird thing about JavaScript. It might be rewriting each time on the last mm -hmm. row. If we put the last row inside of the iterator, it'll look for the last row each time. Should egg, chicken, rice. Let's see. There we go. Awesome. So now we have a database of all the recipes that you can pull by the name. So if you pull out one name, you can say filter each of mm -hmm. these items based on this name. Is that cool? Yeah, that's actually very helpful. Cause, yeah, because I was thinking of, you know, whether I continue to just build that recipe page or what kind of things. Yeah, so now it's I can look back what I did as well. So Right, and that clearing content can be a pr pretty scary when you're like trying to build something. And then the key word here was flexible, you mentioned, right? How do you save a recipe, access it with sort of a database, like how do you create that database and then access it? With your list of recipes here, this is a very hard, visually you see chicken Caesar salad, you see vegan burger, but for a computer to be able to do this, if we want to use VLOOKUP, if we want to use filter, if we want to use functions of Google Sheets, this is pretty hard to say that this is, this is, this looks like one cell and it's actually B8, even though it's merged between B8 yeah. and B13, you can only access it through B8. So this looks like only this first item, at least to a computer and spreadsheet, 
rows and columns are the relationships. And merges are really helpful for prettying up our data dashboards, our data. Sometimes having one header for two columns, if it's like name and you have first name and last name, very nice to do that for humans, but for computers, it turns out to be pretty mm -hmm. hard for them to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess this one, I was just trying to build the, the mm -hmm. common used items and then depending on what I'm cooking, I was even thinking about, okay, how much do I need to purchase for the week, you know, of the amount, yeah. you know, even putting it, okay, this is roughly cost this much and how much is it going to cost, et cetera. But that's, that's something, you know, it's, I just thought it would be fun, but then it become a bit of a burden to, you know, fill in it. So it never gets used. Yeah. But now this might be pretty easy to add to like if you want to build this and you know the cost of each of these items perhaps the food table is where you keep the mm -hmm. item prices yeah how do i pull additional row because it could be instead of a fiber it could be cost of the right so if i was to add more to pull into the yeah so you would go like let's let's add this um did i do this again do we clear the... Are we clear? Sorry. No, that one should be added manually. Oh, no, it's actually didn't pull it. Oh, yeah. We no, it cleared it again. I don't yeah. know why it's clearing that still. Should only be B3 to C. What did I do back here? Oh, wait, right? Okay, these are gone. What was it? Oh, it was VLOOKUP. That's what it was. That shouldn't have cleared out. Why did that? Hmm. Oh, maybe I did it earlier and then fixed it and didn't. Let's see. Let's try again. Mm -hmm. If it does it again, we'll know what's up. Builder, fine. It's perfectly yeah. fine. So let's add to here. Actually, let's just add to the far left price. If we have on our food table price, I don't know what necessary this is going to be. Let's say $4. $4 per 100 gram builder. That's where we are. So this, we can copy this whole thing. We should be able to copy each one of these and just edit it. Let's look up here. We just need to edit C9 to P. No, we don't. Let's do this again. C9, this G, that's it. G to include P. And then this index is what we need to also edit. So right now it will look up chicken breast. It'll be, what? That's funny that it's that, but it's not right. C to P. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This should be index 14, right? So it's the 14th column in that section of C to P. Mm -hmm. Now this, now you have a price. Can you change the quantity now to see the price increase? Just what? Yeah, it would be probably not going to calculate it. It's whatever calculation you want to add. It's right now it's times this divided by a hundred. So it's whatever yeah. calculation okay. you yeah. want there. Works. Yeah, yeah. You have price, so you can add a sum here as well to add up the whole price of it. Yeah, that's actually really good. And again, if you want to add it to recipe data, we would need to add one more line here. Oh, wait, we don't need to add that here because it's in the table, but we do need to add it up here. I think we, so P, we want it here. Just want to get the column number 16. 16, and the price is, is it builder, H, H. It's going to be four. Okay, so now it's just a single thing called chicken more. It's, let's do that. And let's see if that works. Now we should go to the bottom. There it is, chicken more. That's cool. And there's the price. Yeah, that's really helpful. Nice. Uh, actually, yeah. So now this is feeling more like a tool, right? Yeah, exactly. Instead of yeah, copying and because before, as you mentioned, you know, handing it over to someone was impossible because I was, you know, there was a method to my madness and, you know, where do I actually right. pull the data into it? But I think now it's, you know, anyone can enter it and then, you know, get the result back into it. Right. And something that you can, well, one thing, one idea is you can take this from a template to, sorry, my Wi-Fi is dying. You were breaking up a little bit. Yeah. My Wi-Fi was dying. It's okay. Yep. Back Are we back? Sorry, what were you saying? So what I was saying is this takes it from like a template to a tool, like a template where you say, here are the individual pieces that you should put in. And then in addition from in addition to making it a tool, you've also taken what you would consider making tutorials. Like if you gave the sheet to someone 
and wanted to give it to 50 people, you would mm -hmm. probably start making videos and say, okay, here's where you make a recipe and then copy and paste each of these items into here. And you would say this in a video or, or show someone how to do this. But now it's one click, enter your data here, click up here, done. It takes yeah, like they, they can already see what happened as well, right? By clicking on it. Yeah. It's... Well, they can see it, but that, that tutorial or that video becomes like just, hey, here's a feature to build your recipe click the button, it's saved for you. One thing I would suggest doing, even if you're not selling the sheet, even just if you're giving it away to someone, we we as humans are very forgetful. We, we have information that we want to give to someone, but we might not want to give it at the exact same time as we give it the sheet. You might want to add a start tab where you just introduce what the whole thing is about, what mm -hmm. it does, how it does it, some links to videos if you make them either through Loom, on in a Google Drive, a Google folder, in a Google Doc if you have extra information there, or YouTube videos if you have, even if you have them unlisted, put links there for that person that gets that sheet and have a very short little few steps of here's how to get started. Have a few pieces of information on troubleshooting, frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. And I would start that now, how you use it. Yeah, cool. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's it's now I can use it again because I kind of stopped using it because I was like not making progress and making it, you know, I guess, you know, easier as I expected it to be. Oh, well, and now you can also add those things that you were trying to add, right? Prices or something else. There was a few other items. It looked like you were adding bats and things. Yeah, it was just that at the time I was interested in knowing the breakdown of different types of yeah. fat that I was consuming, basically. But but yeah, now I can use the same way to actually, you know, as you added a price, I can add anything else. Awesome. So is this helpful for you? Definitely. It's It was actually, it was interesting to, because when I watched the tutorials and tried to follow, it's an hours of process, right? Because I'm not as, you know, quick as you do. But when I look at you working it, it's actually really satisfying to have a look at, I guess, you know, in the, in the real time that how quick actually someone does it because when you watch a tutorial you don't exactly know maybe it took quite a few tries to get it right but as i can see that you know you you can do it in five ten minutes it's it's impressive but also i might be able to do something like that because i've i've done those kinds of form i call them forms i don't know what they really are it's like make a page and take that take pieces of that page that you have and then move them over to another row. I've done that so many times because it's easier to validate data sometimes or one, validate data, but two, sometimes people don't want to write us in a spreadsheet in like a row. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you have some instructions on how to fill in or you're pulling data from a few other tabs, collecting it and then moving it. God, there's so many ways to say that, right? Move information from one tab to another, enter data here, move tabs, so many things. Pull data, push data. But if you get stuck, like if you're like, hey, yeah, that guy did it in five to 10 minutes. It takes me hours. One thing is just breaking down the problem. Maybe like it might be too many. You might be trying to do too much in one thing. Really? And use ChatGPT if you haven't yet. It does good app script. It writes it. If you give it too vague of instructions, it'll just give a lot of stuff and it might be hard to read. But breaking it down, I, like what I will literally do sometimes if I'm working on something that I don't necessarily know how to do it, I will write comments, what's called pseudocode. I'll try breaking down the problem in comments, but then you can copy it now with AI. You can copy those comments, like the steps you have in your head, copy it. Paste it in ChatGPT and say, give me the app script for this. Yeah, that's a good idea. I haven't actually used the ChatGPT for that purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I might try. What you can also do is literally, if you if you want to try to literally do it yourself and then you get blocked, copy your code and say, what's wrong with, literally, I type at the top, what's wrong with this code? It'll tell me, it'll go through a whole discussion kind of thing. Yeah, that makes it super easy to get out of those blocks. If you're like, oh, what is that one thing? Oh, I need to get the last row and what? Like, I don't know what else. Oh, then what? what is it? Yeah, I think the problem with me is I don't use it often enough mm -hmm. to get good at it. But yeah, it's, yeah, chat GPT, good idea. Yeah, it'll get you through those blocks. Well, I'm I'm happy to get you through that roadblock and challenge. It was fun for me. I'm glad it was helpful for you. Yes, it, it was very helpful. Thank you. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing it out on the market soon. People want to buy yeah, it. I just need to, you know, formatting and stuff just needs to tidy up. And yeah, I'll test it with friends at least. That's a great way to do it. 